After her release, Hannah Wright reacts bitterly to media reports about her past. In 1947, she receives the official confirmation of her denazification. However, she never distances herself entirely from the National Socialist regime. Anna was einfach zu stolz. Hannah was simply too proud to admit that she had been used. She hadn't really been used. She had volunteered, but for a bad cause. Hannah, I don't think, realized what was really behind the Nazis. She was just a German patriot. But she defended Hitler. And this is why she must be called a Nazi. She defended Hitler to the end. Hannah Reich never finds her way back to the new Germany. It remains a foreign country to her. Austria becomes her new flying base. Years later, she even assumes Austrian citizenship. Every year, she takes off from the small airfield at Timmersdorf in Styria to fly across the Alps. She was happy up in the air with her plane. She felt as free as a bird. Reich attempts to find the recognition denied to her in post-war Germany in other countries. In 1959, she travels to India to help establish glider flight. On a beautiful, hot, cloudless day, I flew with Pandit Nero for almost an hour and a half at a height of 3,000 meters above Delhi. That was a wonderful experience for me. But the hard facts were her own country would not accept her that Britain wouldn't accept her, that France wouldn't accept her, but the United States would. In 1961, Hannah Reich is invited to America. She is a guest of Werner von Braun and of the White House. She was introduced, actually, to the president, John F. Kennedy, by the helicopter girls in America, who worshipped her because the she was the first ever woman helicopter pilot. Wright feels more welcome in America than she does in Germany. She is presented with awards, gives speeches, and is celebrated. But once again, Wright soon finds herself embroiled with a controversial regime. On Nehru's recommendation, she travels to Ghana in 1963. Ghana's president, Kwame Nkrumah, had led the former British colony to independence. He too tasks Hannah Wright with establishing glider flight. She had some bad luck again and made a small error of judgment. Although I don't really blame her, I said, oh look, she has once again chosen one of these dictators. Wright stays in Ghana for three years and a close relationship forms between her and Nkrumah. She experiences the country's gradual transition to a dictatorship. She managed to persuade herself that Nkrumah was a jolly good chap, and when he was eventually ousted by a military coup, she, she went round uh, supporting him and trying to get other people to support him until she was eventually deported. And I think that whole episode, again, shows her lack of political awareness and her uh, fanatical enthusiasm for flying. In June of 1978, Hannah Reich takes off on her last flight across the Alps. She is 66 years old and intends to set one more record. She wants to fly further than any female glider pilot before her. But she is ill and dejected. Reich confides her unhappiness to Captain Eric Brown in a letter. She f was filled with depression because she felt that nobody could recognize her love of Germany. 
and she felt that this depression was gradually overwhelming her. Her death was a complete surprise. She just collapsed and was discovered dead by the side of her bed. Hannah Reich dies on the 24th of August, 1979. It was exhaustion. My husband always said that she liked to burn the candle at both ends. What remains of Hannah Reich? The image of her as a heroine of the, of the Nazi era, that will probably last more than her image as a pilot, which is not the way she would have wanted it. Depending on who you ask, Hannah Reich was either an exceptional glider pilot, an unusually brave test pilot who still holds several records and was probably the most skilled female glider pilot of all time. Others will tell you Hannah was a fanatical representative of the Third Reich, who identified with those in power and then, after World War II, denied any responsibility or guilt for the crimes of the Third Reich. A year before her death, Hanno Reich landed back at her starting point, just before sunset. That day, she had flown 715 kilometers, thereby setting a new world record. 